Larry, let's talk about globalism. You, in the book, outline a kind of a history of globalism, focusing on like the key way stations of globalism. Can you tell us a little bit when globalism even became a, an idea and then talk about the institutional expression of globalism? Um, give, give us a kind of rapid fire tour through history. Sure. Well, if we don't want to go back to the Tower of Babel, we can start in 1814 with the Congress of Vienna, which is they really believed that all, Europe was the globe. To them, that was the globe. And the monarchs came together after Napoleon was ousted and tried to set up a better Europe. And of course, all the people thought that they were going to institute democracies. And then many of the people attending the Congress of Vienna realized halfway in, we're not doing that at all. We're reinstituting all the older monarchies. Uh, that failed. Uh, the next really big one was the uh, Versailles Peace Conference with Woodrow Wilson, where again, uh, the diplomats this time sought to establish world order and, you know, world peace, as they say, world peace. And, uh, and they moved millions of people around from um, one country to another, no regard for ethnicity or language or heritage, just, just moved people from Poland into Germany, Germany into Czechoslovakia and whatever. And of course, that failed within 20 years. That, that broke down very quickly. The next really big one was the United Nations after World War II. And what's interesting about that is that the scientists this time took the lead in having created the atomic bomb. They then said, we are the only ones who are really qualified to oversee atomic energy and control of atomic weapons. And that lasted about six months until the people said, no way, we don't, we don't really want to trust you with this. We'd rather have it in the hands of the, the government. Meanwhile, the UN went on with the Bretton Woods Conference to set up an international monetary structure based on the dollar. This was the longest lasting of any of their efforts, uh, largely because the U.S. made a trade-off in which we agreed to protect the world trade lanes with the U.S. Navy and, if necessary, the Army, and in return, most of these other countries, the non-communist ones, would agree to free trade to one degree or another. And that has lasted right up to the last decade when it started to fall apart. 